Welcome back, everyone. We have a first time presenter at the Emerging Growth Conference, Quantum Computing Inc. It trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol QUBT, the only quantum company presenting at this conference. And importantly, we are fortunate to hear their story ahead of the robust conference we're having and the convention marketing schedule company has planned for the remainder of 2023. So conventional wisdom tells us we are hitting the limits of classical computing power. Quantum solves that problem and is a next upcoming and coming game changing technology. Now, while large computing companies would have you believe this technology is about five to 10 years away, I can tell you our next speaker is delivering and selling quantum products that will dramatically enhance computing power today. With us is Quantum Computing Inc., or QCI for short, co-founder and CEO Bob Liskowski, who will share with us the advantages of this highly cost-effective, bleeding-edge technology. Mr. Liskowski brings to the company more than 35 years of executive experience at public and private companies and federal agencies. Mr. Liskowski was appointed by President George W. Bush as the first U.S. Assistant Secretary for Infrastructure Protection upon the launch of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Previously, he served as a president of Implant Sciences Corporation, a manufacturer of explosive trace detection equipment that was acquired by L3 Communications was the Global Director of Information Assurance at the Coca-Cola Company, and is a visiting fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. He received his master's from the John F. Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University. Joining Mr. Laskowski today is the company's CFO, Chris Bemler, who has over 20 years of financial expertise. Prior to joining QCI, Mr. Bimler launched his career at Credit Suisse and Booz Allen Hamilton, supporting financial institutions and government clients. He went on to hold senior financial positions at Bridgewater Associates and Intelsat. Mr. Bimler received his BA in economics from the University of Chicago. It's a pleasure to have you both on our conference today. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for that warm introduction, and it's a pleasure to be here this morning. All right, the floor is yours. Just okay. call me back when you're ready for questions. I will do that. So everybody, thank you very much for the opportunity to present to you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, it's very exciting too. I think we'll have a, a very good short, but I'll be a very, I think, impactful session for you this morning. Um, I'm going to be advancing the slides on this. I suspect you're probably all more familiar with this than I am. You, you know the forward-looking statements, of course. Let me just get into it. So um, what I'm excited about presenting to you today is about the story of Quantum Computing Inc. Um, we're in a very dynamic technology domain. Quantum computing, as you know, has been often referred to as game-changing, revolutionary. It's going to change the, the future. And while I believe all those things, there are practical steps you have to get there to achieve that future. And what we're going to be talking about today is exactly those things that this company is able to achieve to bring quantum computing technology to you today. Uh, who we are, what's interesting about QCI is that we're different than what you see maybe in a more conventional quantum computing space. We're a nanophotonic quantum computing technology company. That in itself is significant because as we'll talk through, that gives us the ability to deliver these real, real today, real, real solutions today. We have proprietary software and technology and hardware, of course, and we harness the power of quantum optical techniques to create, manipulate, and measure single photons and their interaction, better known as entanglement. So for the academics of the world, there is superconducting computing, ion trap, cold atoms, and you have nanophotonic quantum computing. All fit the definition of what quantum computing really is. And as you'll see, Quantum Computing Inc. has achieved some, some, some significant uh, milestones already. The benefits of our technology are not just the computing power and, the, and what we bring into the market. There are some other collateral benefits, size, weight, power, and cost, not trivial cost, uh, considerations for businesses. We can result in optimal performance by providing superior speed, better computing power, more complex computing power at less cost, and interestingly, much lower power consumption than any classical computer can do for the same problem space. It's very specifically focused on 
being more uh, uh, power uh, consumption um, conscious. And we require no special environmental considerations, meaning we don't have to have cryogenic cooling. We don't require special soundproof, vibrational proof environments. These are room temperature, rack mounted, AC powered machines that can exist in today's uh, data center environment. Our mission is to democratize, provide the practicality of, and real value of quantum computing for real world business solutions. We don't wanna just be a quantum solutions company. We, our goal at QCI is to be the quantum company. End of story. And we're gonna show you how we're gonna achieve that. Quick snapshot. With a first-to-market full-stack nanophotonic quantum computing company, we provide these solutions today. And as you'll see, we have five product platforms over which we have scaled our capability. What's really important for the investment community to understand is that while we provide computing solutions, and you'll see what they look like in a moment, we also provide capabilities to do sensing, imaging, cybersecurity, and quantum intelligence, all leveraged off the same core capability. We've already demonstrated this with some of the, some, just a sampling here of some of the partners that we have, a state partnership with the Virginia um, Innovation Partnership Corporation, in which we've demonstrated our ability to do route optimization for drone delivery. NASA, you might have read about the um, recent contracts. We've got two, two existing contracts with NASA uh, to use our, our LIDAR for space-based um, imaging to be able to do uh, snow depth measurement to be able to um, forecast drought um, conditions or potentially flood conditions. And we're also doing optimization uh, programs uh, for them in terms of the data analysis. We have uh, a CRADA, which is a cooperative research and development uh, agreement with the special operations community. Interestingly, um, we're working with some interesting problem sets there. Uh, we have Rabobank, uh, which is a, a focused on financial transactions, of course, and we've done fraud detection capabilities there, just as an example of some of the things that we've done. You'll see the financials on the bottom, and we'll get to that later during the course of the question and answer period. We've got a great leadership team. Uh, Chris Bemler, as you've heard, being announced or introduced to you as our CFO. Chris has got not just a great uh, deal of um, ex expertise and experience, but Chris has got a tremendous mindset for the ability for us to align business, making sure our financial resources are completely focused on delivering value for the shareholder and developing our technology. Um, Dr. Bill McGann, not just a good colleague of mine with whom I've worked, but more importantly, a brilliant scientist and not just a scientist, but an entrepreneur. He's taken the company from uh, the, the, the laboratory table and research, research and development all through commercialization and right up through um, the uh, uh, sale of a company. Um, Similarly, we've got Dr. Yuping Wang. He is our brilliant uh, quantum photonic scientist, uh, comes out of Stevens Tech. He is the mastermind behind everything we're doing here. He's, ama he's amazing. Mike Keemer, uh, Vice President for Quantum Solutions. Sean Gabler is our uh, president of our wholly owned federal subsidiary Key Solutions and our Vice President for Government Solutions. Those gentlemen are actually bringing these solutions to the marketplace for us. We have a great board, Carl Weimer, PhD physicist, um, works very closely with you, Ping, uh, on, in the NASA uh, consultation uh, space. Uh, Robert Fagason, former vice chair, as you can see, uh, of the New York Stock Exchange. Mike Trammell, very proven and seasoned executive. It brings a tremendous amount of experience to us on the board level. Bertrand Velga, one of our first uh, investors, uh, came to us. He runs a family fund out of Belgium. Just as importantly as our board is our technical advisory board. These folks keep us making sure that we're not surprised by technical developments. They make sure that what we're doing in the technology space meets customer expectations. So Jim Simon is a former colleague of mine and a good friend, is a chairman of our advisory board. He comes out of the CIA where he ran as, as, as assistant director, but also worked at the Microsoft Institute. Uh, Brian Lamacchia, former distinguished scientist and engineer at the Microsoft, um, at Microsoft, responsible for cryptography, is a, is a close confidant of ours in, term, in providing advice in our crypto, uh, cryptological and cybersecurity space. Uh, Lewis Shepard, um, he's a strategy, uh, senior uh, strategy advisor to VMware, also works in the DOD world as a senior uh, advisor to uh, 
Emerging Technologies for DOD. And then Dr. Javaz Shabani recently came to us from uh, with NYU. He's a leading scientist and physicist at NYU. And he brings that academic uh, perspective to us. So we've got a great team of advisors and it's complemented by this tremendously talented team we have of almost 60 people, over half of which have postdoctorate degrees. This is an incredible team that we're leading today. Just a brief uh, overview of our timeline. Though we started back in 2018, I would suggest to you that the company really found its home and its direction in 2022 when we did the acquisition of QPhoton and transformed this company into a hardware company. That was no small feat in and of itself, but in the past 15 months, we've both done the acquisition, integrated the company, developed the IP, and have launched over five, uh, five products and have made significant, success, uh, tremendous success and achievements in a very, very short period of time, particularly when you compare us to our peer group in the hardware space that have been around for decades. This company already has technology in the marketplace, which is delivering value today. Very few companies can say that. So to the real meat of what we're doing, what do we do? So we have five different platforms here, and you'll see from left to right, we have our quantum computing capability. The first launch of our Dirac One is a binary optimization um, machine that allows us to do over 11,000 variables. And what's differentiating about what we do with nanophotonics versus um, superconducting or these other techniques is that we don't require error correction. So 11,000 qubits can be applied for 11,000 variables one-to-one. -one. The We are not having to do it because the photonics are naturally coherent atoms. So that's a big differentiation. That's what allows us to be able to be room temperature. It allows us to take on some really significantly challenging problems, everything from complex supply chain to logistics, as we talked about, uh, route optimization, financial fraud and detection, a whole host of applications, which we're getting into the market today. This is an on-premises capability. Nobody else can say that. And I say that meaningfully because we have a capability which can be put on premises at a price point which makes it affordable for the entire market, not just an elite group of companies that can afford millions of dollars for quantum computing and their infrastructure, but we're talking about the ability to scale into companies today that really wanna take advantage of what quantum computing can offer. Secondarily, we have our quantum intelligence or AI. We just recently re released our Reservoir Quantum Computer, which is our first step into our quantum photonic space. While this is not a quantum computer in and of itself, it's the pathway to that. Within the next year, we'll be doing a quantum photonic uh, um, reservoir computer. But our initial instantiation of this is a very small machine that does, does supervised machine learning and AI at the edge. And it's the hardware, and we think it's the only hardware out there, most of the reservoir computing today is done through software. So if you're familiar with the artificial intelligence world and understanding what regenerative AI is and understanding how reservoir computers have a significant impact on the ability for AI training sets, this is a, a machine that can be put at the edge or on the back of your computer to do exactly the same thing at a very low cost, but more importantly, tremendous computing power and low power consumption. And that's already being fielded. We just announced yesterday that we actually sold a number of these machines into the market for cybersecurity applications and for other regenerative AI applications. So more to follow on that, but as we think it's a tremendous opportunity for us in the marketplace. My favorite, cybersecurity. I have a cybersecurity background as Anna had alluded to earlier, but I believe this marketplace is really where there's a lot of low hanging fruit for us to demonstrate the utility of our authentication capability. We have two different bites at the apple for authentication. One is using our Puff chip, which we manufacture that does without keys, the ability to authenticate between devices. And we are implementing in our, in our laboratory, uh, the ability to create a quantum network that will demonstrate the ability to entangle two photons that will provide the authentication again, without keys over distance. Those, those, are, no, those are not trivial feats and they have application across the industry, but specifically for uh, very, very secure communication requirements, transactions such as financial transactions, uh, authentication among high security environments. So we are very aggressively moving into that space. We have uh, remote sensing. You may have seen the recent announcement back in October 
that we just demonstrated our ability to do detection of mines, landmines, which are ubiquitous throughout the world, as you all know, everything from the Ukraine to Bosnia to the Laos, Cambodia, uh, anywhere in Africa. Uh, landmines kill many thousands of people, children, innocents, as well as the people who are trying to detect them. Um, we have demonstrated the fact that we're able to uh, detect a landmine below the surface down to two and a half feet using photonics mounted on a robot. And our next challenge is to put it onto uh, an airborne platform to get scale. Uh, we have a number of organizations, as you can imagine, very interested in that kind of technology. And then quantum imaging. Uh, we have demonstrable proof of our ability to use quantum capabilities, photonics, low power, to be able to identify through soft tissue tumors, such as a, a mammogra a mammography or other areas where soft tissue can be, um, can be imaged to detect anomalies such as cancer tumors. Um, so you ask yourself, how do you get into these technologies? How do you take these technologies into the marketplace? Clearly, we are selling our technologies, but we're also working with partners as we've demonstrated through the sale of our reservoir computer, working through cybersecurity partners. And we're looking to develop partnerships to get into the marketplace. We wanna be that core hub of technology to work with um, mar um, really market leaders to get into the space. So an example of our uh, Dirac series of computers, we actually have uh, Dirac 1, which is doing uh, binary optimization problems. As I mentioned, these are these are optimization problems which can uh, lend themselves to um, logistics, sort of yes, no problems, loading problems. You know, do I want to take this route or that route? Do I want to take the next route or the next route? These are fairly complex problems, um, but they're binary in their approach. We also have our Dirac 3, which is doing um, variable integer problems. So we have the ability to do integer, which is a much more complex um, list of types of optimization problems, such as supply chain optimization. Most supply chain optimization problems today are being done through the Cubo approach because that's all the, the, uh, the customers have availability to. But with the, with the introduction of our Dirac 3 being able to do an integer-based approach, we can do much more highly complex problems. We've already been demonstrating that with some interesting uh, potential clients that have some very complex uh, supply chain problems. Most importantly, these are very low power operating machines. So for example, Last year, we did the BMW um, challenge you may have heard about in which we used 96 core uh, to come up with a problem user, using our quantum algorithms. And we cons consumed about uh, 500 mega megawatts worth of power to come up with an answer in several hours. We ran the same exact problem on our Dirac and we were able to do that in a matter of minutes and consumed less than 50 watts of power and came up with a better answer. That's the power of what quantum computing is going to show today. And when I tell people today where classical is still outperforming quantum computing head to head, I think the analogy I oftentimes use is for those of you, I'm a track guy. So Hussein Bolt holds a world record for the 100 meters. You can imagine Hussein Bolt breaking the tape at the same time an infant is running, just doing that same 100, just slightly behind Hussein Bolt. Hussein Bolt would be classical computing that infant would be quantum computing, and we're gonna be surpassing that in very short order. It's tremendously exciting. Our quantum intelligence capability, we've talked about this, a reservoir computer, I'll just go through these, you can read these on your own. Cybersecurity, not only do we have our ability to do uh, the chip manufacturing, but we have our own quantum random number generator, which is truly random, both doing uniform and uh, arbitrary distribution for random numbers to do key distribution or for simulations. The vibrometer I talked about also in terms of doing sensing. And then of course the imaging capability, which we can demonstrate the capability to be able to identify anomalies through soft tissue. So where are we in the real world today? We've done things such as sensor optimization. We're uh, using, uh, we're making available our Dirac series to both education, obviously, we're heavily now just getting into the sales cycle for selling our Duracs into the commercial space. We've demonstrated capabilities along supply chain optimization, uh, remote sensing for defense applications, uh, applications for LIDAR, uh, both government and commercial, fraudulent transactions. We are in the market today.
cross, cutting co across all those domains while I have specific areas of optimization and applications will be cybersecurity. So this is a very big opportunity for the company overall in terms of looking where we can market our, our technologies. Our growth. So our focus is on expanding into the commercial space, both in the, uh, and as well as DOD and federal and state and local governments. Um, we're launching our, our quantum uh, networking solution. Uh, we're gonna be doing a demonstrable capability of that uh, later this month in our laboratory. As you can see here, we're expanding our platforms. We're launching our Dirac 3. We've already got five platforms in the marketplace. This company is taking, is quickly re re evolving from the R&D concept into commercialization, which is the hallmark. I wanna speak a little bit about what we're doing at the core level with regard to our chip manufacturing. The chips core to our capability to scale. As you noticed in the bottom here, we've already signed an agreement um, to uh, open up a foundry in Tempe, Arizona, where we're gonna be doing our initial run of our quantum photonic chips. Unlike silicon chips, our photonic quantum chips are gonna be on a lithium niobate substrate, which gives us the ability to miniaturize these components and take all the optics out of our machine and provide faster, more capable quantum technologies, lower power, less, less cooling, no cooling required, less heat generated, and ultimately, within our, on our product roadmap, is to be able to miniaturize, to go into our quantum computer onto a chip. The holy grail here is to create a hybrid computer that has both classical and quantum properties and go to scale at that. And we're very close to being able to do that. So the highlights, large addressable market, tremendous amount of uh, momentum going on in the marketplace today. We are literally changing the market from being focused on gate model computing to understanding the benefit of what nano quantum computing can bring into the uh, to the space for value today. And, I, and this is what I keep stressing. This is not three to five years. This technology is here today. We have best in class platform. We've got a tremendous team, technology team and advisors that are helping guide this company. We have multiple rev revenue uh, layers to us in terms of what we can go. We're not a one trick pony just focusing on computing, but it's also the application of these quant quantum technologies. We have a tremendous, um, we're building a tremendous portfolio of, of IP and the barriers to entry on this, is this is not a trivial capability to be able to produce. We've got years of capability through uh, all of Dr. Wong's uh, efforts converting over to real capability de uh, development. So this is a company which is largely undiscovered. It's a tremendous value in the marketplace. We're providing real capability. We're very fundamentally based. We have great technology, a great team, and more importantly, we are in the, we're just uh, entering our revenue opportunities today. So all the fundamentals that or, re, investors ordinarily look for is right where we are today. I think Anna, if I'm not mistaken, we are at the end. So yes, great I, job, Bob. Few questions. Perfect. We do have some time for some questions, and thank you for kind of breaking this down for us. It's it's a lot, and this really helps explain it. So. Um, I know that you have a, a number of recent or media announcements that you've made. Could you quickly review that list and maybe spend a few moments elaborating on your most recent announcement, specifically earlier this week? Sounds sure. like revenue has begun. It has. Um, we uh, we just announced this week the launch, the uh, sales of our reservoir computers. We sold, I think, five five of those machines just recently uh, to a cybersecurity provider, which th they themselves are not just a distributor, but they're a user of this technology to use it for their AI platform, which does behavioral analysis uh, that gets applied to the cybersecurity th uh, threat um, analysis spectrum. Uh, another company uh, which is doing behavioral, uh, similarly behavioral characteristics for a slight, uh, for much different use to be able to um, determine uh, uh, personality uh, characteristics of, of various people for, for different uses. The AI is just a first, application of these the, of this hardware into the um, AI space. There are many other applications which we're pursuing and which we uh, will be making more announcements here shortly. Um, the other uh, feature or the other technology we sold is our quantum, quantum random number generator. Um, that, as I mentioned, is uh, it's a uniform distribution model uh, capability which provides key, uh, keys for encryption. So it's, it's really just the first start of our ability to get into the marketplace.
Fantastic. Uh, QCI also has accomplished quite a bit in 2023. You entered commercialization in the first half of this year with several product launches. Do you want to explain maybe some of those launches and tell us a little bit about the interest level in these products sure. and what could we possibly anticipate in revenues in 2024? Yeah, so it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great lead-in, right? So we've done everything from the products that you've mentioned, right? Uh, just as I mentioned here, the Reservoir Quantum Computer, the QRNG, or physical products that we're actually selling. Uh, we're just entering to the market with our Dirac 1 and 3 uh, as an on-premises solution. Um, and that is something which is, uh, we think, uh, as we're demonstrating the use cases for this across a variety of areas, everything from supply chain logistics fraud detection, um, we expect tremendous uptake for. Um, and then we have a number of contracts that we've been able to land through NASA, which is sort of the flagship contract in my mind, because having a U.S. government contract uh, from a NASA is very validating for us. Um, the NASA team loves the technology, the nanophotonic ca capability, and the ability to actually put these platforms into space is ultimately what this uh, is the trajectory we're on. So those while the initial contracts are relatively small, the opportunity for us to scale up onto a space-based platform for a variety of applications is really what we're demonstrating here. So that's, it's tremendously um, validating. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, um, some of the special missions work or the special operations community work that have real-time defense requirements uh, provide tremendous um, opportunity for us, particularly, regrettably, as this world continues to um, uh, you know, it, it's um, experienced the challenges politically, those types of solutions are going to find themselves more and more in the field. Oh, I can only imagine. Uh, Bob, so given your recent product launches, you spoke about with the intention of establishing your quantum chip foundry in Arizona. Uh, break it down for us. How are you going to pay for operations, marketing equipment, and plant while you wait profitability? Sure, it's a great question. I'll tell you what, I'll start, but uh, Chris Bemler is probably the better person to answer that question for you. Um, so the, the strategic decision to make that um, to make that move was kind of inspired by both our need core, from a core capability to be able to ensure that we have this as a scalable level. But there are several government opportunities out there that which also inspire companies like ours to take this leap. Um, there's the CHIPS Act, the CHIPS and Science Act that you're probably familiar with. Uh, with. There's some DOE opportunities to do these things. But we had to make the initial investment in the company, and we did that. We, we invested in some long lead uh, um, items so we'd be able to get into the marketplace. We found a, a very um, relatively inexpensive opportunity for us to, get, to start the manufacture of this. And, and Chris, I'll lead you over to that, and maybe you can give some more color. Yeah, happy to. I think it's key when think of this question to contextualize it. I'll start by saying we run a very tight ship. What does that mean? Our cash burn for operations, if you look at our latest queue, is about you know, 1.6 million per month. That is well below our competitors. So what's the importance of that, right? That's the question. That really means the bar, right, to reach revenue break even is relatively low. Uh, to put that differently, our costs, they don't proportionately jump as we scale. Our margins, they're extremely attractive. Some specifics there I'm not going to go into, Anna, as we haven't yet publicly disclosed those details. But the key takeaway from giving that context is now that product delivery has begun, we are certainly looking to revenue as a key contributor to significantly fund you know, both operations as well as the expansion that Bob talked about into chips. So that's first and foremost. So Bob talked about some of those recent revenue milestones great that's ramping up while that goes on why we are you know bridging to the day that we turn EBITDA positive we're certainly focused on what Bob talked about around some unique opportunities for government grants that we qualify for chips act widely known that's a key one there's others with what I would describe as having extremely low extremely attractive interest rates that are also government sponsored that we qualify for. And we have already applied, submitted applications to a number of these and are currently going through that selection process. Those are super exciting, but we 
are not a one trick pony, much like on the technology side, we're not putting all of our eggs into one basket. So for full transparency, we you know continue to consider other options out there. We receive constantly high interest from bankers, investors who are interested in funding us, partnering with us. And uh, as we look at those internally, I think this is important to note for the investor community, we don't look at it as just money coming to us. We're looking at how we can work with them, how they can support us, how they could either be a long-term partner how they could help us with our product development coming to market, really looking for people, you know, investors who are excited about a couple of things, either, you know, wanting to change the world or now those who can kind of save the world. And I know that sounds dramatic, but when you listen to kind of Bob's you know, passionate overview, you know, it comes from the heart and that really crosses everyone at the company. Yeah. So I, I highlighted those and, I'll kind of end there, Bob, if there's anything else you'd like to add, but uh, it's just very important to note the multiple streams that we're looking at, the great appetite that we have for our stock, and you know, candidly how we just stay day in and day out focused on achieving our milestones, achieving the plan, and then you know, hence creating the shareholder value through that. Yeah. So, Anna, I know we're running out of time here, and I just wanted to say one thing. So, first of all, thank you. But more importantly, I want to say, you know, hopefully what's come across here is not only are we confident about what we're doing, but this is a tremendously important capability, and this technology and this company is going to deliver this. We're heads down, as Chris pointed out, we're heads down executing. We know that financial times ahead of us, by all the predictions, are going to be tough. This company is going to succeed based upon one thing, doing everything we've been doing in the past, doing it going out and proving it, saying it, and selling it. It's pretty simple. It's hard, it, you know, it's simple to talk about, obviously hard to do, but we've got tremendous companies. This is a company that's undervalued. When we have the opportunity, we're buying more stock. And all I can tell you is that this company is really in a tremendous position in the marketplace today. Well, those are perfect closing remarks. Thank you so much, Bob and Chris. We appreciate your presentation. Fascinating stuff here. And we would love to have you on in the future with some updates. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. Okay, everyone stay with us. We'll be right back with our next presenter.